Hello, everybody, and welcome to Gospel on the Go with Rachel for the third Sunday after Epiphany, the 21st of January. Uh, this morning, I'm going to share with you the morning prayer service that will be shared in St. Saviour's in Vermilion. And we begin with the gathering of the community and our land acknowledgement. As we gather this day, we commit ourselves to seeking new ways of being in relationship and new ways of acknowledging and living out our relationships with our Indigenous siblings. We know that we hold an important responsibility to acknowledge the grounds on which we are privileged to gather as we worship the Creator. In humility and gentleness, we acknowledge that we live on Treaty 6 territory, this land that was first shared by the by Creator with the Cree, Nakota Sioux, Blackfoot, Dene, Sarsi, Salto, and Métis Nations. In light of our history and understanding of our role as Treaty 6 people, we dedicate ourselves to moving forward in the spirit of partnership, collaboration, and reconciliation as we learn together and contemplate the, the possibilities that lay ahead. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. O come, let us worship. We share together in the Jubilate. If you have a green book of alternative services for the Anglican Church of Canada, you can follow along and join me on page 49. The Jubilate is Psalm 100. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Our first lesson today is taken from the third chapter of Jonah, verses 1 to 5 and verse 10. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So jo Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk, and he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what, it, what, what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our psalm is a portion of Psalm 62, verses 5 to 12. For God alone my soul waits in silence, for my hope is from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress, I shall not be shaken. On God rests my deliverance and my honor. My mighty rock, my refuge, is in God. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Those of low estate are but a breath. Those of high estate are a delusion. In the balances they go up, they are together lighter than a breath. Put no confidence in extortion and set up your uh, up no vain hopes on robbery. If riches increase, do not yet set your heart on them. Once God has spoken, twice have I heard this, that power belongs to God and steadfast love belongs to you, O Lord, for you repay to all according to their work. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. 
Our New Testament lesson is taken from the first book, letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 7, verses 29 to 31. I mean, brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and these those who deal with the world as though they had no, no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our gospel lesson is taken from the first chapter of Mark, verses 14 to 20. The Lord be with you, and also with you. The holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat, mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father, Zebedee, in the boat with the hired hands and followed him. The Gospel of Christ. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Last Sunday, you might recall that we listened to the gospel sharing with us the call for Philip and Nathaniel to follow Jesus. And today we, are he we hear once again a call narrative as Simon, Peter, Andrew, James, and John are called to follow as well. Jesus is well into the recruiting phase of his ministry and all seems to be going according to plan. Jesus had a plan to gather disciples and he was doing as any good leader does, create a mission, to tell the people about the truth about God's kingdom, that God, God's kingdom was at hand, begin to create the plan or steps to fulfill that mission. He was setting the scene for preaching, teaching, healing, pointing people toward God, recruiting people to help implement the steps in that plan, leading to a fulfillment of the mission. Jesus was setting up for success, and the step we are hearing about today was the recruitment phase. And from what we have heard, by the end of this day, Jesus was halfway there. Philip, Nathaniel, Simon, Peter, Andrew, James, and John. Not a bad start. Jesus knew what he was doing. He already had half of his team assembled. Now we know that Jesus had a bit of a head start with his plan. He was the son of God, after all. However, he was willing to do whatever had to be done to make sure that his mission was fulfilled. And although he was fully divine as well as fully human, Jesus did not seem to have been given an edge to his, uh, to, his, to his advantage. He was expected to work the way people work, with no more and no less advantage or resources. Jesus went about achieving his mission with exactly the same tools and opportunities that we would. The only difference Jesus had was that he already fully believed that he could do what he set out to do, and that in and of itself, was indeed a huge advantage. In our Old Testament lesson, we heard the tail end of Jonah's story about calling the country of Nineveh to repent. You may remember that Jonah was a very reluctant hero in this story. He did everything humanly possible to avoid doing this work. He even allowed himself to be thrown overboard and swallowed by a big fish to avoid answering God's call. And no, it wasn't a whale. It was a big fish. But when he finally came around, he found, much to his amazement, that the people of Nineveh were open to hearing what he had to say. And they did indeed repent. God had a plan in place for the people of Nineveh, and he needed someone on the ground to help unroll that plan. While Jonah was reluctant to help, something, probably continuous promptings by the Holy Spirit, 
helped him to accept that God wasn't going to stop calling, so he better say yes and get busy. And because he said yes, a miracle occurred. The whole of Nineveh repented, changed their ways, and God changed his mind about what would happen next. Jesus and Jonah both had to work a plan to fulfill a mission. Jesus believed in his mission and trusted that the plan would succeed. Jonah didn't believe in the mission and didn't trust that the plan would succeed. But it did anyway. Where Jesus worked faithfully and trustingly to accomplish what God intended, Jonah dug in his heels, badmouthed the process, and found that he accomplished what God had intended after all, almost in spite of himself. Jonah learned that day that when God set something in motion, it is going to work itself out. Humanity's free will does not deter God's will. Sometimes it just slows it down. God has a plan for the church, both big C church, as in Christianity worldwide, but also small C church, as in places like St. Mary's, St. Thomas, and St. Saviors, and faith communities just like us, and not just like us. When God determined it was time for Jesus to become one of us and send him to become Emmanuel, God with us, God was putting the next parts of his plan for his creation in place. Jesus came to share with us the truth that the kingdom of God is at hand, right there in Jesus. And then, through his death and resurrection, we were given the gift of eternal life in the kingdom of God. The mission Jesus came to fulfill was fulfilled. The plan he used, the steps it took, were successful. Jesus did what he came to do. Mission accomplished. What we need to understand, both in Big C Church and Small C Church, is that the mission Jesus had to fulfill wasn't the last mission God created. A mission was given to Christians everywhere when Jesus ascended to heaven and commissioned us to pick up where he left off. We are called to go out into the world and share the good news of God's love through Jesus Christ, just as Noah, sorry, just as Jonah was called to do the same in Nineveh. We have a choice. We can jump at the chance to take on this mission create a plan and execute it. Or we can pull a Jonah and jump overboard in our efforts to avoid doing what we're called to do. However, we already know from Jonah's story that God is patient and willing to wait until we get with the plan. It seems to me that this is our chance to learn from Jonah's mistakes and just get on board with what God is calling us to straight away. In the end, as Christians, we are going to make the right choice anyway. So why don't we just start there and not waste any time? God has called all of us to enter the time, a time, this time of transition. Me to another role for which I feel very underprepared. And all of you in Day Spring Ministry as you work together to seek out your new rector. God is giving us through these transitions the opportunity to go back to basics. Revisit the mission given to us by Jesus in the Great Commission. Things are changing so much and we must realize that we aren't going to be able to work through these changes in the same ways we have worked through things before. This requires a whole new plan. This is the perfect time to sit down with that mission and revision what plans, steps, and opportunities we need to make to bring God's mission to reality in the world and in our own faith communities. So, we can dig in our heels, looking backward at the comfortable way things used to be, even though we know we can't have them back. Or we can listen to Jesus calling us to follow him, jump up and be part of God's plan for creation right from this new beginning on. God's will is going to be done. Our free will only determines how long it is going to take before we are willing to participate. We should probably just sign up right now. That way we get to share in all the wonder that comes from being faithful to God right from the beginning. Let's pray. 
wonderful, creative, imaginative, and patient Father, God, Creator. We thank you that you call us, as you called Jonah, as you called Simon, Peter, and Andrew, and James, and John, Nathaniel, and Philip. We thank you that you call us daily to, to grow in our relationship with you, to grow in our relationship with Christ through the, through the working of the Holy Spirit. We are in a time of transition in Day Spring Ministry. I am in a, tra- a time of transition as I prepare to move into the role of bishop in Brandon. All who are watching are probably in times of transition in some small or large ways themselves. And we ask that you would take away our fear and our worry about what that transition might look like and help us to know that you have already given us the gifts we need, the people and resources we need around us to successfully walk through this time of transition. Help us to recognize that you have created a plan, a plan that is divinely perfect, and you have invited us to follow through with that plan. Open our eyes that we might see the next steps and give us grace and patience and courage that when we can't see the next step, we will simply take a leap of faith or a step in faith, trusting that you are there with us and will guide us every step of the way. Be with us in a time of unknowing that when we look back, we will recognize that it is in this time of unknowing, in this time of transition, that our greatest growth and joy have come. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. I'd like to share with you an affirmation of faith. It's called the Shema, the Hero Israel. And if you have a green book of alternative services for the Anglican Church, it can be found on page 53. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. We will continue with the prayers of the people. And if you have a green book, the prayers can be found on page 120, litany number 13 for for the Incarnation. As a people of hope and anticipation, we pray for those who have asked for prayer, for those whose leadership we rely upon, those who carry the gospel to the peoples around them. In the Anglican Communion, we pray for the Church of South India, united. In our national cycle of prayer, we pray for the Reverend Dr. Eileen Scully, Director, and the Staff of Faith, Worship, and Ministry. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada, for Bishop Michael Price, the people and rostered ministers of the Eastern Synod. Together, we pray for the week of prayer for Christian unity and the ecumenical work and witness of our churches. In the Council of the North, we pray for the Indigenous ministries of the territory of the peoples and their new Bishop Clara, Clara Pamela, Bishop Clara, who will be or who will be consecrated on Thursday evening. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the Diocese of Brandon, for the Venerable Rachel Parker, Bishop-elect, for the Right Reverend Isaiah Larry Beardy, Assisting Bishop, for military chaplains Jennifer Renouf, Christian Pichette, Eric Davis, Rebecca Foley at CFB Edmonton, and Robert Parker at CFB Wainwright. In our partner Diocese of Bouye, we pray for the Parish of Marama, Everista and Sambimana, Rector and for the people of Ermanskin Cree Nation. We pray for our partner parish of Bagambo in Bouye Diocese. In our Dayspring Parish Cycle of Prayer, we pray for James and Terriel Byer, Doug Kimball, and Jean Ward. We pray for our siblings in Dayspring at St. Mary's Edgerton, St. Saviour's Vermilion, and St. Thomas Wainwright. We take time to pray aloud, or in the silence of our hearts, for all whom we now name, remembering especially Kathy and Drew, Dan, Don, Janiah, Jimmy, Leon, Rob, Stephen, Trevor, Tricia, and Dolores, and those we, whom we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Again, we pray for Bishop-elect Clara 
as she prepares for her consecration on Thursday evening. We pray for all members of the Canadian Armed Forces, remembering especially the chaplains at Garrison Wainwright, Rob, Eduardo, Balamu, and Kent. In joy and humility, let us pray to the Creator of the universe, saying, Lord, grant us peace. By the good news of our salvation brought to Mary by the angel, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the mystery of the Word made flesh, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the birth in time of the timeless Son of God, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the manifestation of the King of glory to the shepherds and magi, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the submission of the Maker of the world to Mary and Joseph of Nazareth, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the baptism of the Son of God in the river Jordan, Hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. Grant that the kingdoms of this world may become the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. Amen. And now we pray the prayer for Dayspring Ministries. Creator God, you have commissioned us to be bearers of light to your world. As you have given to us the Dayspring, who is Jesus Christ our Lord, so encourage us to share him with all whom we meet. Allow us the privilege and the responsibility to carry the light of your Dayspring into the communities in which we live, work, and play, the communities you call us to serve. With your Holy Spirit's presence and guidance, may our work as Dayspring Ministries bring hope, peace, and joy to your world. In the name of the day spring, who is Jesus, our Lord, we pray. Amen. And we pray the prayer for new leadership. God of all hope and peace, we thank you that you are leading us forward into a ta new time of ministry. Give us wisdom and discernment that we might hear your voice. Bless the people you are leading to us, who will offer us their gifts and companionship as we move into a time of transition and into our future ministry. May we prepare ourselves for them as you prepare them for us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And the call it for the day can be found on page 351 in the Green Book of Alternative Services. Almighty God, by grace alone you call us and accept us in your service. Strengthen us by your Spirit and make us worthy of your call. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A couple quick announcements, specifically for the folks of Dayspring Ministries. Next week, the 28th, will be Holy Eucharist in Vermilion, followed by a potluck lunch and a vestry meeting. Um, it will be morning prayer in St. Mary's um, Edgerton and St. Thomas and Wainwright. The 4th of February, we're flipping things up a little bit. The 4th of February will be morning prayer in Wainwright and Edgerton and Eucharist in, in, um, in Vermilion. And then the 11th of February will be morning prayer in Vermilion, Eucharist in St. Thomas and in Wainwright and St. Mary's in Edgerton followed. Okay, so get this. Okay, so Sunday, February the 11th will be... You will have Eucharist at St. Mary's 1130, followed by a potluck lunch, and then our annual general meeting following church, following this, the lunch. Then we'll go back to Wainwright, to St. Thomas, and we will have our annual meeting at 4 p.m. on February 11th, and we'll move quickly so we can all get ready for the Super Bowl. The following week, um, Sunday the 18th of February, it will be Holy Eucharist and AGM in St. Saviors, and it will be morning prayer in, in Wainwright and Edgerton. And then 25th of February, one service, one joint service at St. Thomas Wainwright at 10.30, Holy Eucharist with a potluck lunch. You are more than welcome to join us. That will be my last service. And then I will be moving to Brandon that week. So I hope you're able to join us. Um, for those of you who are interested um, in, in, in 
participating in a way in my consecration. Um, it is traditional for churches um, who have raised up a bishop from, from whom a bishop is, 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 has been elected to contribute to um, the vesting fund to assist the, the new bishop in getting such things as the rochet and schmear. So the rochet is the white gown, almost looks like a choir gown or a surplice for a cassock. Um, the rochet and schmear, and then the schmear is the red um, sleeveless, almost like a vest that goes from shoulder to foot um, that goes over top of that. And then the cuffs that come together with the red band and the purple cassock that goes underneath all of that as well as the cope, I already have the cope, so we're good there, and the mitre, the pointy hat <laughs> that bishops wear, I need two of those, um, the bishop's ring, and a pectoral cross. Um, and all of those things um, are, if people would like to donate to help to help fund those things, um, if you let me know, I will give you the, um, the, the mailing address for the Diocese of Brandon, and those donations can be made through there. Any donations that are above and beyond the cost of vesting the new bishop go into the bishop's um, the bishop's benevolent fund. Um, it's a it's a fund that allows the bishop to help people, especially clergy, um, when they're when they're in dire straits. Some of you might know that the diocese of Brandon is a council of the North di Diocese. We don't have a lot of money. We, as a matter of fact, we have many clergy who are not paid at all, and the bishop's benevolent fund or the bishop's um, assistance fund is a, a, a quiet and dignified way that the bishop is able to help people out whether it's through um, if there's an if there's an illness in the family or there's a need for something practical or something you know a little assistance quietly the bishop can do that with discretion um, recognizing the dignity of the person who is being assisted um, and and that that fund is is give people give to that fund of the generosity of this of their hearts um, and it is, it, is, it is fully to take care of the clergy and people, um, particularly the clergy of the diocese. So if you're interested in that, let me know and I can give you the address for the Diocese of Brandon and the person who would um, take care of that for you. I think that is everything. I will be back tomorrow for Church at Home with Rachel on the 22nd, on Monday the 22nd. And back next week for the t January the 28th. I can't believe how quickly 2024 has already launched. Ha oh, if you are a member of the congregations from day spring and you haven't already submitted your report for the AGM and you need to, I need them ASAP. I've got to get those reports ready immediately. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. God bless you. And um, may, may you feel the presence of God, whether you're Jonah jumping off that ship and into the belly of a big fish or you're like Simon Peter and Andrew and James and John saying, yep, I'm ready to go. But however you feel called by God, know that God will meet you in your journey, however you started out. God bless you. And I enjoy, I, I, hope, I look forward to walking with you on your journey going forward. Have a great week, everybody. God bless.